This video is going to be on the different types of tissues and it'll be broken into two categories. So it'll be skin and muscular tissue and then connective and nervous tissue. So our first set of information is on epithelial tissue types. So this is one category of tissues and epithelial just means skin. And you'll see that we've got four different types of skin tissues represented here that all fall under this title of simple epithelial tissues because they only have one layer. So that means there's only one cell layer here. So this is a cell layer, that's one cell layer, that's it, we only have one. And there's classified based on their shapes. So if it's a squamous shape, that means that the cells are kind of elongated like this, almost have a teardrop look to them with the nucleus in the middle. Here's an example of what that would look like inside the body. These types of epithelial skin tissues would be used for filtration. So filtering things through that skin or diffusion. So in the body, this would be found in blood, which is capillary walls, or in air sacs in the lungs, which would be next to blood cells. So for capillary walls, if we had blood vessels here, oxygen would be diffusing into or out of the blood depending on where this blood is going where this blood is coming from and then in air sex the same thing if i had my bronchioles here which are the tubes that would be in the lungs i'd have alveoli coming off of those that would also be by these blood vessels and oxygen would be diffusing into that blood supply and that's how we get oxygen around our body so there's that set of skin tissues. Our next one is cuboidal because as the name would suggest, they are little cubes. These are often used for secreting things or absorbing things. So you'll find that these are gonna be in glands that secrete hormones, sweat, oil in the body, or absorbing different nutrients in the body, which is why they're found in the digestive tract and the kidneys. So secretions, the one in the glands, absorption, the one in the digestive tract because maybe they're absorbing nutrients that will then go to the body. Simple columnar is based on this long tower structure, which is why it is no surprise that protection is the main role, just like foundations in a building. These long structural cells are great for building the walls of organs, often found in the digestive tract, so they will be involved in secretion and absorption as well, as you'll see there, there they are all stacked up. Oh, I wanted to say about cuboidal. So this is kind of confusing for students, so see that this single ring here, this single ring here, they often think that this is more than one level of cells, but these are discrete little packets. So this only counts as one layer of skin cells. So this does fall under cuboidal. And then our last one is pseudostratified. Pseudostratified looks like it's more than one layer, but actually it is only one. We did not have a microscope slide of that one. We used to, but it broke. So what that looks like is, if you look at the picture down here, it looks like it's more than one layer, but believe it or not, the way the nuclei are placed, it's only one layer, and it is falling then under the simple category. This is found in the reproductive organs in the body, and its main purpose is secretion, and also in the trachea. If we have more than one layer of epithelial tissue, then we're going to fall under this category, which is called stratified. Still the same shapes, squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. It's just that we have more than one layer of that tissue type, so it becomes stratified. Examples are shown below. So now if we have a bunch of squamous, which is shown here, this would be your your outer skin layer and in your mouth. Its main role is protection to keep foreign invaders out if we're looking at your skin. But you can see the difference. Here we've got tons of different squamous cells, whereas before we only had that simple one layer. For cuboidal, it's the same thing. You'll see we've got stacked layers of these cuboidal cells, also for protection, but found in a different area. These can be found in the eyes and in the reproductive system. And then our last one is stacking those columns on each other. So we've got more than one layer there. And this is gonna be for protection and secretion in the body. They are very rare. They do not occur in many places. And the only spot you'd find these is in glands. So those are the two major categories for skin tissue that are classified by the number of layers that they have and the shape of those particular cells. These then can be found in glands. And we have two types of glands. We have exocrine glands which means glands that secrete outside of the body, things such as sweat, 
and oil. And then you'll see some real tissue examples of those since we did not have any glands that you could look at in lab. And then endocrine, the opposite, release inside the body. So think hormones, and there's some examples there. So some glands that release inside the body, pituitary, which is up in the brain, adrenal glands on top of the kidneys, or thyroid, which is in the neck. So those fall under skin, since they're made up of skin tissue. And now muscular tissue, we've got three categories for this. Skeletal, shown there. Notice that in skeletal, there's no gaps. These muscle fibers are banded. So they got these striations going through them. They've got nuclei all over because they do so much work. But there's no gaps. That's one way you can tell the difference between skeletal versus cardiac. And you can see that in the clip art images. Cardiac has these holes in here because this tissue type has branches that make it stronger so that it can beat, since it's found in the heart, keeps your heart beating, stronger so it can beat throughout your entire life. Skeletal muscle is the only muscle that is voluntary because it moves bone and you can control that. Both cardiac and smooth are involuntary, so you cannot control these. Involuntary muscle tissue is found in your stomach. So when you're digesting food and your stomach is churning, that movement is something you cannot control. In the esophagus, so if you've ever swallowed a Dorito chip that was too big and it scraped all the way down, you felt that kind of pain and you couldn't stop it because that smooth muscle is still working even if you took on a chip that was too large. And then in the urethra, when you're going to the bathroom, if you've ever tried to stop midstream, the pain you're experiencing is you going against that smooth muscle tissue. And there's the different examples of what those look like. So that's going to be the stopping point for this video. The next one we'll pick up on connective tissue.